Guys, a long time past is my last video, but today I'm back with some new stuff. I'm going to show you how to paint these Rizal Rust ruins to using your Warhammer 40k or Kill Team games. But first things first, sorry for the audio quality. I'm recording this on my phone because I'm moving house and the mic is in a cardboard box somewhere, so please be patient, okay? Judging by the looks of the model itself, these were metal buildings or, I don't know, fortification. So my primer slash base coat is a bright metallic silver. I use red oil cans, but you can use Vallejo metallics for a great result with an airbrush if you use one. Now let's start weathering them. I'm not gonna use a wet palette this time, so if you decide to follow along, grab yourself something like a metric ton of plastic soda bottle caps, cause they would be your disposable palettes. The first paint I use is Orange Rust. As you can see, I'm placing 12 drops in the cap and diluting one to one with Flow Improver. This makes a paint which is a, in between a glaze and a wash. Then use a big filter brush and go all over the piece. This is not science, so do a quick and dirty job, but don't leave too much exposed metal. I know I should have my Vallejo rust color somewhere, but I couldn't find it, so I made a replacement using orange rust and chart brown. I apply this color on the model, trying to focus on the darker areas like corners or around the nuts and bolts. It should be like a thick wash, similar to what you do with the, let's say, Citadel contrast paints or Reaper liners. Water accumulates on top of the balconies, so that's where I try to deposit most of the paint to simulate a more realistic piece. When the paint has dried, you can already start to see some texture forming here and there. An important detail I want you to notice. Uh, see how my brush strokes are vertical? If you do this way, you can simulate water weathering on vertical walls. No matter whatever texture you get with the paints, it will never be enough. So I'll show you how to use pigments. I have Vallejo Old Rust here. The application is really straightforward. Put some of the dust in your barrel cap and add some small amounts of matte medium. You want a thick paste that you can apply here and there on the piece. This step actually adds some real physical texture with a proper volume after drying without just covering the piece with color. So it simulates the typical rust punginess that you do find on all metallic structures. So when you're done, wait for this to dry completely. It will take something like 20 to 30 minutes. You can see now there's a lot of textures we can use to give the model some 3D depth. So put some model layer aluminum and start dry brushing. The intent of this step is to pick up those subtle details we introduced with the thick pigment paste, as well as those that came with the model. It may look like we are moving back, introducing fresh metal on the structure, but this step is really important to introduce some contrast that makes the rust look more realistic. So take your time and just don't overdo it, because otherwise you screw everything up. So now the piece has a nice contrast between the recesses and the raised parts, but I want more rust. So I made this orange paint here. It is basically the same as a really diluted Risa rust that I can use as a glaze. I am not dry brushing this. I'm using this more as a wash because water induces rust where it pulls. So dry brushing rust on top of metal, it just doesn't look right to me. Well, this step can take as much time as you want. You can go nuts on those nuts, 
pun totally intended, and weather the crap out of them. Just remember to be organic and to give a uniform look to the piece. If you want, you can add some water dripping, leaving some rust spots behind. So just use your fantasy and try to make it look as real as you can. I know I said this too many times already, but contrast is really important when you paint miniature, so we're going to play with contrast again. We're going to increase the contrast depth by using a dark wash all over the piece. I didn't have any Vallejo wash, so I used my Army Painter Dark Tone, diluted with Flow Improver. But all kind of soft body black wash will do the job, I mean, use what you have. You probably already know how to wash, so let me show you how the piece looks after the application when the wash is still wet. And here's the piece after it's dry. You can see how many beautiful shades the wash added. Now I'm gonna add even one more layer of contrast on the mini. I grab a dark gray paint to simulate the grease, oil, and the filth that you usually find on industrial sites. The paint that I usually use for this kind of step is Engine Grime from Sacred Weapon Miniatures because it's simply awesome. It's a wonderful paint you have to try. Use the tip of the brush to freehand some oil dripping from the pipes and grids and to add an overall layer of dirt around the nuts, grids, and all the other fittings that you have. And finally, here we are with the completed wall. It didn't take a long time, something like one hour or something like that. I mean, it's a really fast paint job, nothing special. The box comes with three walls, so you can batch paint them, and maybe you can even get away with one hour total painting, tops maybe, including the drying time, I don't know. It didn't take me a lot of time to do all of them. And the result doesn't really look bad at all, I mean, it looks pretty realistic. So if you like this, tell me what you think about the techniques I use down in the comments. Let me know if you try them and I hope I'll see you all next time. Bye. If you like this tutorial, please like and subscribe so I can keep making more. And don't forget to leave your comments and critics in the comment section below so I can keep improving. Thank you for watching.